Hey, what's up guys? It's Flex and welcome back to the Turbo Performance Series. So last year, I upgraded the air intake tube on my Mercedes C250 from the stock plastic one to the Tornado tuning silicone, high temperature, resistant, flexible, just overall better air intake tube. But Tornado tuning reached out to me a few weeks ago and they told me they improved on it and they created a better version. So in today's video, I'm gonna be installing the new version on my C250. And I wanna thank Tornado tuning for sponsoring this video and providing me a sample of the product and if you're interested in buying this product definitely reach out to tornado tuning i'll leave their contact information in the description below the good thing is i'm going to get a good read on how this new tube performs against the stock pipe because i actually installed my stock air intake tube and drove around for a few weeks to get used to it so now i'll see a big difference from that to the new air intake tube from tornado tuning before I install the brand new product, first I wanna show you guys how I remove the stock air intake tube. Before we install the pipe, I wanna disconnect my battery just in case I accidentally knock something over. Let's remove the engine cover and start off by loosening the clamp for the air intake pipe. Now we want to disconnect this connector by using a torque screwdriver. It's held on by two torque screws. Just remove it and pop the connection right off. Next, let's remove these three connections to the air intake tube. For this last connection, I'm not going to fully remove it. I just want to loosen it because when we go and pull off the whole intake tube, that will slide right out. So if you follow this small pipe, it leads to the other end of the air intake tube. That's where we're going to have to remove the final part. Let's first remove the turbo pipe out of the way. So with the turbo pipe out of the way, now we have access to the air intake tube final connection. It's held on by a clamp similar to the first connection that we removed. You can have access to it by reaching underneath the diverter valve. It's very tight, so you're going to need a short screwdriver. So this was very hard to do. If you have small hands, you're good to go. If not, you might have to move the coolant reservoir out of the way so you have access. Now that we loosened up that clamp, let's remove this final connection and then we can pull the intake tube out. Now that the clamp is loose and all the connections are taken care of, we can just pull the pipe right out. Here is the stock air intake tube. So this tube wasn't designed that well. It actually robs my car of performance. The reason being is one, it's made of plastic so it absorbs a lot of heat. Number two, this mini air intake tube is known to crack or break causing check engine lights and previously the only way to replace it was to replace the entire tube. Now there are third party resellers selling just this mini tube. Also, where this sensor sits and where this piece connects to the main pipe, there's a lot of micro leaks and I definitely don't want that especially when I want optimal air coming into the pipe into my turbo. But before I show you the new air intake tube, I need to remove this sensor and this sensor right here and install them on the new tube. This sensor is actually a pain to remove, but if you wanna see how I did it, go watch my previous video and I'll link it in the description below. 
Here is the brand new air intake tube from Tornado Tuning and it looks great. Now I get the best of two worlds where I get silicone and also aluminum. And where this sensor sits and where this piece sits onto the main pipe, it's all welded so I'm not gonna get any micro leaks. Also, the silicone is gonna help the pipe flex so there's not gonna be any cracks. This is made of silicone as well so that's gonna flex and it's heat resistant and it's gonna keep the air colder going into my turbo. I already went ahead and installed this sensor and the other sensor. Now it's just a matter of installing it back on my car. So after some trial and error, I realized that taking the silicone part off of the main aluminum tube and mounting that to the turbo was easier than trying to install everything as one piece. So my silicone piece is onto the turbo. Now I can slip this onto the silicone part, use my clamps, and put all the piping back together. Everything is nice and installed. Now it's time for a test drive. So I've been driving around for about 15, 20 minutes now. No check engine light, car drives perfectly fine in normal conditions. But when I go to step on the gas pedal, it, it's a different story. Like as soon as I step on the gas pedal and then the turbo spools and then the turbo kicks in, it's almost like there's more torque at the beginning of the power band. And then, if, and then when the car just keeps going and going and picking up speed, it feels like it, the car is just sucking in more air through that whole entire power band. It's, it's kind of hard to describe, but it's a really good feeling. Um, it's definitely a huge improvement over stock. I can definitely tell you that for sure. Um, but yeah, I can be in any gear right now. I'm cruising at 35, step on it, and it just keeps pulling. It's a really nice mod, really nice. get pulled over. The torque, good stuff. Well, I'm going to drive home right now and enjoy my car. I hope you guys like the video. If you do, hit like below. As always, make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time.